Hey everybody, welcome to Madden Science. We're going over some AP biology problems. Today dealing with genetics, We've got some P plans, looking at chi-square analysis, also a little bit of sickle cell. You're gonna notice a few problems here. First, this one is similar to the one that we did on our latest quiz. We also have from our M&M lab, which you'll notice here it was in pink. We're gonna take a look at that practice problem that was looking at chi-square analysis for green and albino plants. When we're through with that, we're gonna take a peek into a little bit of our sickle cell lab. This is from Howard Hughes Medical Institute, HHMI, the making of the fittest, natural selection in humans. So some of those pretty complex dihybrid crosses and some of the analysis that comes with those. Let's start off with our first one. First one's gonna be similar to our quiz, as in pea plants, tall is dominant to short, and with seed color, yellow is dominant to green. Okay, so I'm gonna color code that in there. So you can look at some of the traits from Mendel's pea plants. We'll bring it all the way down here, and tall and dwarf. Down at the bottom and yellow and green. We're going to use some notation for that. We're going to use capital T for tall and a lowercase t for sharp, capital Y for yellow and a lowercase y for green. Those will be our notations. Now the question asks a pea plant that is heterozygous for both flower color and height and seed color is crossed with another plant that is heterozygous for height and green. Okay, so that's gonna look like this. We're gonna have heterozygous, so big T, little t, and big Y, little y, that's our heterozygous plant, crossed with heterozygous for height, which would be big T, little t, and it's green, which means that it's little y, little y. Now the question that they're asking in the end is how many offspring are gonna be tall and green? So we can keep an eye out for that. Tall and green can come in one of two ways. You can be tall by being big T, big T, or tall by being big T, little t. And green, the only way to do it is with lowercase y, y. So those will be the things that we're keeping an eye out for. In terms of our Punnett square, we can do our gamete formation for the probabilities and divvy it off like this. Big T, big Y. Big T, little y. The bell's ringing. Perfect timing. Little T, big Y. And little T, little y. For our other one, there's really only two possible gamete possibilities. So big T and little y, and little t and little y. Now if I want to go ahead and draw upon it square for that. We're going to throw the four different possibilities from our heterozygote plant onto the top. So big T, big Y, big T, little y, little t, big y, and little t, little y. Those would be our four gamete possibilities. And from our second plant that's heterozygous for tall and it's green, you got just two possibilities, big T, little y, and little t, little y. Those are our possibilities. Now, we're searching for just the ones that are tall and green. So even if we wanted, we could get rid of any ones that aren't tall. So this guy is not tall. This guy's not tall. Those are our two non-tall ones. And then we can get rid of anyone that's not green. This guy's not green, not green, not green. Okay. So out of our eight possibilities, that's going to leave us with 
one, two, three that are both tall and green. We can write that then as our ratio, three eighths of the offspring will be tall and green. Our next problem is coming from our chi-square analysis with M&Ms. If you flip through and get to the back, we've got a practice problem down here. It's on the bottom of fifth page and continues on to the sixth. This is what it looks like if you combine it onto one page. And then if we put up here our degrees of freedom in our list for probabilities. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this just with our iPad. It says up here for our practice problem that pea plants, green color, the green is dominant to the albino. And they already give us our notation in there. They give us a scenario. If we cross two pea plants that are heterozygous for color, what we expect for the phenotype ratio of the offspring. Okay, so what the cross is can be seen here. Big G, little g, crossed with big G, little g. These are both heterozygous. They ask us over here, we're going to do a Punnett square. Now the outcome of this is going to yield for us three quarters green, so three of them are going to be green, and one of them is going to be white. And ultimately that's also our percentage. We can think about it as three quarters or 75% and 25%. We're going to use this data down below. They give us on this next portion, we can kind of star that or highlight our phenotypes based on offspring observed. 72, 12, and a total of 84. We're going to run a chi-square analysis on this. Our null hypothesis, any difference between the observed and the expected data is due to chance. So we're going to go ahead and keep that in mind for our null hypothesis. We can go ahead and fill in here, and you'll note that 72, so let's zoom this in a little bit. Got 72 green, 12 albino, adds up to 84 total. Now, when we're looking to figure out what our expected is, we're going to have the same total number and then the expected is going to be figured out using our numbers from earlier, knowing that the green is meant to be 75% and the albino is meant to be 25%. So throw out a calculator in here, and you got 84 times 75% or 0.75. It's going to equal 63. 63 is going to go in here. Kind of a messy 63. And 84 times 0.25, which is 21. From there, we can note our differences. Both of those squared equal 81. Then we're taking 81, our observed minus expected, that's squared, divided that by the expected. We can clear that out and say 81 divided by 63 equals 1.29. And for albino, we have 81 divided by 21. And that'll be 3.86. Now we add those two numbers up, that comes out to be 5.15. Scrolling down asks about what our degrees of freedom are. 
we got two choices here. That means our math is going to be pretty simple. Two minus one, which is one degree of freedom. If we look back at our table, okay, because what we're most concerned about are these values, our degree of freedom, and then our chi-squared, which is 5.15. Scroll up a little bit on that. And we can see that, in fact, 5.15 for one degree of freedom is to the right of 3.84, which would be at 5% or 0 0.05. And that's going to mean that we reject our null hypothesis, right? We're going to be somewhere right in here, which is on the side of rejecting. All right, now our HHMI, natural selection uh, sickle cell part, we're focusing in over here on problem 12, which is on page 10, looking at a bunch of couples. We got two different traits involved for blood type, either A or O, and then what's going on with the red blood cells. We're told that we have couples that are all heterozygous for type A blood. The way in which we're writing that then is big I A, little I O, and big A S. These individuals are crossed with the same heterozygote. Now note when we're going to do our gamete selection, we can get big I A with a capital A, big I A with an S, little I O with a capital A, little I O with an S. Now running that through as a Punnett square is going to result in a Punnett square that looks just like this. This is from earlier in the lab, and you can color code that. If we zoom in on that, the number of offspring that it yields, we can take a peek in a little bit closer on this and see we've got number of blood test results with phenotypes and the probabilities of each. We're given the number of children, which is our observed. This set of ratios, which we could turn into percentages if we want, are going to give us what would be our expected numbers within the lab. Here is that data. I highlighted to show the three distinct types of red blood cells. In this particular case, we'd want to know that, oh wow, if you are indeed sickle cell disease, the chi-square value is jumping up. These individuals are being selected against. And right? it's harder to live, especially on this island where there are fewer medical resources. The other chi-squared for type A blood and O for normal red blood cells and then sickle trait are remaining about normal. Neither one is selected for nor against. Now the homework portion that ended up being a little bit tricky, uh, we scroll down and it asks us for the second part. It says, hey, we've got an extra little twist. And that is the introduction of the Anopheles mosquito carrying malaria. What's gonna happen then? Well, we're asked to fill in the data table and do a bit of predicted results. We're gonna get the same color code. So I'm gonna go through this. We can see red, blue, and green. So recalling from our initial Punnett squares, how these would fit in, these guys are AA, these are AS, and these are SS. And you'll note over here the chi-square values that the bottom four are a little bit skewed. And here's why. When the Anopheles mosquito has been introduced, it's going to bring with it malaria. Malaria is going to, of course, give a slight advantage to the heterozygotes, AS. They have some degree of immunity, so a heterozygote advantage. Their numbers are going to be higher than expected. The malaria parasite carried by the Anopheles mosquito, Plasmodium falciparum, is going to infect and kill more normal red blood cell patients than normally 
or than an island without the Anopheles. And the number of sickle cell disease patients will also decrease because of lack of health care. What we'll end up with then, you can see at the bottom, if we kind of zoom in, is a chi-square that is quite a bit bigger than the chi-square from before. So we've gone from chi-square up here of 13.58 to now nearly doubled chi-square of 24.02. Now the idea is, again, that you have selective forces. So there's three different aspects of selection happening within these three different genotypes and the three different phenotypes. Uh, make special note that the type of blood was not significant in predicting how these different individuals fared. All right, everybody, I hope that was helpful. Hope it helped answer some of your questions. Don't forget to stop it, rewind it, play it back. We've also got some genetics problems here you can practice. We have other ones from the textbook. And maybe best, kind of take these and recraft some of your own, and them to a good friend, practice some extra, and of course, let me know when you have some questions. Take care.